All right, well, good evening, everyone, and thank you for joining. This is our Tuesday topic number two, and this evening we'll be talking about Rosary High School's Catholic identity. Right now, I'll turn it over to Sister Geraldine to lead us in prayer. Thank you, Danielle. Um, tonight, instead of reciting the prayer, uh, one of our sisters composed the music to this prayer, so if you will bear with me, I'm going to sing the prayer. All right, in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. May God the Father bless us. May God the Son heal us. May God the Holy Spirit. Excuse me. <laughs> I've lost the two. I will recite the prayer. <laughs> May God the Father bless us. May God the Son heal us. May God the Holy Spirit enlighten us and give us eyes to see with ears to hear with, hands to do the work of God with, feet to walk with, a mouth to preach the word of salvation with, and the angel of peace to watch over us and lead us at last by our Lord's gift to the kingdom. Amen. Thank you, sister. Thank you. Sorry. <laughs> You're great. <laughs> All right, so our panelist for tonight is Sister Geraldine Kemper. She is our Community and Parish Outreach Coordinator. Sister Katrina, who is our Assistant Principal Dean of Academics. Miss Bridget Gamboni is our Campus Minister, Senior Theology Teacher, and Theology Department Head. And then Hope Worley, who is a current junior at Rosary High School. Sister Geraldine? Okay, thank you. Um, St. Dominic was born in Spain in 1170 and was a founder of the Order of Preachers, known as Dominicans, with the universal mission of preaching. Dominic and his Dominican brothers were seriously committed to academic studies in order to be effective preachers. St. Catherine of Siena, another well-known Dominican saint, was known for her contemplation and prayer, as well as her involvement in church and civil affairs, and works of charity. People would seek her out as a spiritual director. She is one of only four women to be named a doctor of the church. And we, as vowed religious Dominican women, Sister Katrina, Sister Catherine Mary, and I here at Rosary, we hope to preach the gospel of Jesus as we contemplate the word and celebrate with joy, study attentively, live in community, and proclaim in ministry as we try to, as Dominic did before us, respond to the needs of the world. In 1873, the Bishop of Alton requested four Dominican sisters from the convent of St. Catherine of Siena near Springfield, Kentucky, to come to Jacksonville, Illinois, to assume the responsibility for teaching a large population of Irish immigrant children whose fathers were busy working on building the railroad. Committed to living the Dominican charism, exemplified by St. Dominic and St. Catherine and other holy Dominican women and men, the sisters responded to the needs of the times, and they subsequently founded the Dominican Sisters of Springfield in Illinois. At the request of another bishop, Bishop Lane of the Rockford Diocese, the Springfield Dominican Sisters <clears throat> opened the... Um, I'm sorry, um, the Springfield Dominican Sisters uh, were asked to open an all-girls high school for the Aurora area, and that's what they did. Sister Mary Joseph welcomed our, our girls on September 4th, 1962. Today, Rosary High School, rooted in the Dominican tradition of prayer, study, community, and preaching, is committed to the mission of educating and empowering young women to develop their full potential so they can, as St. Catherine of Siena said, be whom God meant you to be and you will set the world on fire. Thank you. Thank you, Sister Geraldine. I'll now turn it over to Sister Katrina to talk about Rosary High School's Catholic identity. Thanks, Danielle. I have been blessed to have a Catholic education all my life, from grade school, through high school, through college. I've worked in a Catholic school all my life. So what is Catholic identity? 
As a Catholic institution, Rosary High School has the privilege of making faith the cornerstone of everything it has to offer. To identify as Catholic, one professes faith in God, has a relationship with Jesus Christ, and follows the teachings of the Catholic Church. Rosary instills Christian values and welcomes students of all beliefs. So, for example, we worship as a faith community in many different ways. We start the day each day with morning prayer for the whole school. We have daily prayer at the start of each class. We have group prayer services or monthly school masses, reconciliation services. We pray the rosary and each grade level has a retreat sometime during the year. So every student is given an opportunity to take leadership in faith development through these prayer and worship experiences. And now I'd like to tell you a little about our theology department, what the theology curriculum is at Rosary High School. The word theology means the study of God. So throughout the curriculum, it unfolds about God as Father, Son, and Spirit. This curriculum was actually outlined by the Catholic bishops of the United States. This framework for theology classes for high, Catholic high schools. In the first semester of freshman year, the semester itself provides an introduction to Christian uh, scriptures. Students explore the human desire to know God, as well as how God reveals important truths to us. You do not need to be Catholic to attend Rosary High School, but you do have to support the mission and take the required courses, like those that I am talking about now. In that first semester, students also study what's meant by divine revelation, the origins of the sacred scriptures, and how to interpret the Bible. The second semester of freshman year is about Jesus Christ. Who is Jesus Christ? So it's the second person of the Trinity, the Word of God, the Son of the Father. It is the mystery of the incarnation, and incarnation means God became man, truly human, in Jesus Christ. So the course explores that mystery and God as Trinity, which is a mystery, and how Jesus as a model of faith teaches us what it means to be really human, truly human. Sophomore year theology, first semester, then moves on to the mission of Jesus Christ. So it explores the place of Jesus Christ in salvation history. The birth, the life of Jesus, his death and resurrection are all called um, part of that Paschal mystery where human beings are called to eternal happiness with God through Jesus Christ. So we have the mission of Jesus Christ. And then in second semester, um, Jesus carries that mission and hands it to the church to follow through because he is no longer physically present on the earth because of life, death, and resurrection. So the mission of the Catholic of Jesus Christ is handed on to those apostles and uh, in holy women that were around him when he was alive in, in their presence. Uh, students explore how the apostles founded the church. The Holy Spirit sustains the church. So the emphasis is placed on the sacred nature of the church. So after founding the church, the theology in the junior year expounds more upon the life of Jesus Christ himself. Um, the essential message of the first semester of the of junior year is Christ's moral teaching. 
the importance of love of God and love of neighbor. That uh, moral teaching to explore and grow in um, maturity for morality. They learn what the person and ministry of Jesus and the teachings of the church are, but it's directed toward the development of the student's distinct character, um, rightly formed conscience, and wise decision making. So the, they're in, the students are introduced to and are expected to understand the fundamental aspects of Catholic, teach, of Catholic theology. The second semester of junior year is then having learned the morality um, of how we are to live, then it's living as a disciple of Jesus in society. <clears throat> Students explore how Christ's concern for others, especially the vulnerable, the poor, the disadvantaged, how Jesus' concern for others really embodied his social mission of the church. And that really ties into what Sister Geraldine talked about for the four pillars of the Dominican sisters um, in that aspect of preaching and service, that pillar. And then finally, the senior year, first semester, and if you're, you've been in a Catholic school, you've probably already studied the sacraments many times, but the emphasis on this first semester is to look at each sacrament and to go more deeply into the meaning and the grace and the power of the sacraments in our lives, especially the sacrament of the Eucharist. The course studies each sacrament and engages students to try and better appreciate the meaning of the sacraments the physical sign of God present in our lives through those sacraments. And the last semester is based on ecumenism. It looks at not only the teachings of the Catholic Church, but then relates that to non-Catholic Christians as well as different world religions. Recognizing that the fullness of God's revelation is entrusted to the Catholic Church, it helps students to see that there are ways in important spiritual truths that are also in non-Catholic traditions as well as non-Christian religions. So they learn about other faith communities. They learn um, to respect those faith communities, that there are a lot of people of different faiths, but the same God. Once again, you do not have to be Catholic, or maybe you even have attended religious ed classes or Catholic school. Any of those, you are open to be at Rosary High School. Sometimes people worry about um, taking the theology classes because they're not Catholic. And what I would say about that is theology, the study of God, is a course like any other course you take. Um, in high school, whether it's biology or algebra or Spanish, the theology course has material for you to study and learn. You don't need to have eight years behind you. Granted, if you do, it enriches the meaning and um, the curriculum more deeply for you, perhaps. Um, but it can also be a very enriching experience for those who really haven't had much religious formation at all. So it's part of developing you as a person, preparing you to be a responsible and respectful person in society. Thank you. Thank you, Sister Katrina. You're welcome. I will now turn it over to Ms. Bridget Gamboni to talk about Rosary High School's campus ministry and touch a little bit on senior theology because she is currently a, the teacher for senior theology. Thank you, Ms. Maselli. So campus ministry, the goal of that is to continue to keep the faith, the Catholic faith, weaved throughout the day um, at Rosary. And so the, the first thing that we do, we begin all things with prayer. And so as Sister Katrina mentioned, we begin every, every school day with all school prayer. 
And that is a great way for us to, to give our day to God, to center our day on God, and to remind us of the many things, the many blessings God has given us, and to also pray for the community. We also begin each class period with prayer, so it is an integral part of our day. And it is up to the teacher how they want to lead class prayer, but each, each teacher has a different uh, style as long as it's in the Catholic Christian tradition. Uh, that's most important. And then we also have mass. We have prayer services. We recognize that the, the central part of our Catholic identity is the Eucharist, the Mass, the most important prayer that we can pray. So we make it a point to have Mass every month as a whole school. And we also offer uh, Eucharistic adoration. First Friday of the month, we allow students to go to the chapel to pray before the Blessed Sacrament um, during their study hall if they would like. Again, as a way of keeping the Eucharist a part of a part of our school spirituality, um, you know, making that uh, a central part of, of our day. And we also have prayer services, various prayer services that we do throughout the school year. We have a May crowning prayer service, a Holy Week prayer service. We also do reconciliation twice a year for the whole school to give them that opportunity to receive the sacrament of confession. Uh, also recognizing the importance of experiencing God's mercy and God's healing in that important sacrament. And next we have our class retreats. So every class has a class retreat. It's a, a one day retreat for the freshmen, sophomores, and juniors. The freshmen, it's a, a an introduction to Dominican spirituality, an introduction to rosary, really welcoming the girls into, into the rosary community. Sophomore year focuses more on them, them being a gift, a gift to others and also being a gift of God. So them really recognizing that they are a beloved daughter of God and that they are a gift to the world. So really focusing in on that, that theme there. Junior retreat is focused on leadership, recognizing that juniors moving into senior year, next year, kind of getting them thinking about what it means to be a leader, a Christian leader, and then also this idea of um, vocation. What are, you called, what are you called to do? Uh, this universal call to holiness, but also, you know, thinking about senior year, start thinking about the future, and, and where is God calling you? Um, how is God calling you to lead? And Seniors, they have the option to attend our Kairos retreat, and Kairos is a three-day retreat, so that one's a little bit longer. It's overnight, and it's optional. Students, seniors choose to attend that. 99, I'd say 99% of the seniors choose to go on this retreat. It's one of the most important experiences, I think, that a student will experience at Rosary, and it is very powerful. It really, the girls learn that they are that they are loved, and that they can experience God in in their daily lives, and and they grow in community with one another, and they they really see the power of God working in their life. It's a really wonderful retreat, and so that is um, offered for seniors. And Dominican preachers, that is a student leadership opportunity that students may choose to do. We select four girls in their junior year to serve as a junior and then they, it carries over into their senior year. So we have students apply for this role and their, their role is to um, continue to really further the Dominican charism throughout the school, primarily through preaching. Uh, really, as a Dominican school, we value this, this pillar of preaching very much, uh, preaching with our life and also preaching with our words. The Dominican preachers offer reflections at mass as a way of peer ministry to their classmates. They lead, they're the ones that write our morning prayers and they also lead Bible studies and they do various service projects and they are, are leaders, uh, they're spiritual leaders um, at the school and students look up to them and um, they're, they're a great witness to, um, to what it means to be a follower of God and um, 
and to see St. Dominic also, to see his gifts, what he contributed to our faith and bring, putting that into practice as well through this idea of preaching and, and study and community and prayer, really focusing in on those four pillars of our Dominican identity. So it's a great, um, a great thing that we have and something that students are um, able to apply for if they want to do that when they are, uh, when they're sophomores. So, and we also have service. Service is another thing that we greatly value at Rosary. This idea of preaching with your life and giving, giving of yourself to others, to other organizations, um, using your gifts to enhance the life of others, to enhance the community. And so we place great value on that. And we ask all the students to complete a minimum of 20 hours of community service each school year. And with an emphasis being on um, not-for-profit organizations outside of Rosary. They can do service within Rosary, but we really like to encourage them to, you know, step outside of the four walls of Rosary and to get out into the community and find those organizations, those not-for-profits that um, are doing work that really means a lot to them, that really sets their, their soul on fire and um, helps them to grow in their leadership and, and in this, this idea of, of service and, and preaching. It's, a, it's an extension of preaching. That pillar of preaching, the, the call to serve is an extension of that, you know, preaching with your life and um, using your gifts that God has given you to, to help others. And it's a, a great thing. The students, they often, they say, um, you know, at the end of the year, they do reflections and that's, they say, how have you experienced God this year? And so often they say it's through the service uh, that they've done, that they've experienced um, they feel like they've encountered Jesus in, in those moments. So it's, it's always beautiful to, to see that and to know that it's helping them grow in their faith too. Thank you, Ms. Gamboni. <laughs> All right, next we have Hope Worley, who is a current junior. Hello, again, my name is Hope Worley. I'm a junior at Rosary High School. And I came from a public middle school, so coming to Rosary, I did not have much of a religious background. Now, however, I am able to learn about religion through various theology classes and curriculums and many fun retreats that we go on through our freshman to senior years. I love practicing my religion with my friends, and this is mostly through like service opportunities. We do a lot at Rosary and out of Rosary. And then we also have a daily prayer and our daily prayer takes place every morning. And we also have a daily prayer before each class period. And during the class periods when we do our daily prayer, we pray for each other's special intentions. So we have a student lead us in prayer and it's really nice to connect and see like what is going on in each other's lives and how like praying for them, you're thinking of someone else and that's your classmate, so it brings a really strong connection. And uh, one of my, my, mo my favorite thing that involves religion is our masses, because we have a great choir, and after mass, we sing a song that brings our, our whole entire school together, and even like the teachers participate, and the song is called Daughter of God, and all the students love this song, and students will go on and they will remember this song for the rest of their lives because of what that strong connection between religion and each other. So at Rosary, there are many clubs that involve religion, such as Lifesavers. We have a Bible club this year, and one that I participate in is Interact Club, which is a service club. And through these, you can learn more about your faith. You can go on trips like the March for Life, and then an interact club especially we get we are able to get service hours from rosary and we do a service projects projects outside of rosary as well and this just really bonds us as a class in a school because even though we have theology every day we are able to go out of our way and participate in these clubs and learn even more so overall as a student uh the religion at rosary bonds us together as we create a stronger sisterhood and I am very grateful for this as it has brought me and my friends very close together in our class 
or all the classes at Rosary, like they have this unbreakable bond through like Jesus Christ and his teachings. Thank you, Hope. Does anybody have any questions? If so, you can go ahead and write them in the chat box and then we can go ahead and answer those for you. So we have one question. Um, the question is, do you typically have more than four students apply to be chosen as a Dominican preacher? How do you communicate, inspire those who are not chosen? Thank you. All right. So, yes, we typically do have more than four, and it makes it very difficult when when that when that, that happens. Um, it's a, a whole faculty staff process. Um, so there's some requirements, of course, that we have to that are expected of the girls: certain GPA and certain. Um, qualities mainly that they have to want they have to be comfortable speaking in front of large groups of people and they have to be considered um, someone who represents rosary well and in the classroom and outside of the classroom and it's an application will consist of um, some questions that they answer as well as an interview that I do with them and then I will take those who apply and um, have the entire faculty and staff um, also share, you know, what who they see as um, exhibiting these leadership qualities, and so it's it's a it's a process. And of course, with prayer, with the Holy Spirit, who um, we feel can do this. And the main reason for the number four is because uh, the the preaching conference. The girls go to a preaching conference in Michigan and they ask uh, that we bring four students. And so that's sort of where the number four is, is that there's a limit of who, how many can go on the preaching conference. Um, so that's why we have that, that number limit. Um, for those who aren't selected, it's, it's difficult. Um, I always encourage those girls to, I um, allow them to participate in some of the things that we do, like if they want to help plan some of the retreats, I also encourage them to lead prayer if they would like to do that one, uh, a few times um, throughout the school year, if, if they would like. Um, I also encourage them to, to apply to be on the senior retreat team next year going, when they become seniors, they can do that as well. And so I, I do, and whenever there's an opportunity for them to speak, um, for example, you know, we had uh, Rosary Day last week and uh, off, you know, inviting them to maybe pray a decade of the rosary or offer a testimony. So knowing that they have that desire to serve, I try to, to remember that, keep that in mind and ask them to help with other things to keep them involved so they can still preach, um, knowing that they don't have to be a preacher, uh, you know, official Dominican preacher to preach with their life. They can, there's still plenty of opportunities for them to serve and just wanting to encourage them and help them to, to continue doing what God's calling them to do. And so it's, yeah, that's my approach, what I try to do. And it's, uh, right. like I said, it's always difficult when more than four apply because we have so many great girls at Rosary. So it's tough, <laughs> very tough. Thank you, Ms. Gamboni. Are there any other questions? All right. <laughs> All right, well, I want to thank our live panelists for coming on tonight and discussing Rosary's Catholic identity. And just for some perspective, parents that are on, we do have some really important events coming up this weekend. So on Saturday, we do have a practice entrance exam that we're holding at Rosary for both boys and girls. And that is from 9 a.m. to approximately 12 p.m. And then the following day on Sunday, we are hosting open house um, from 12 to 4 p.m. in person. So we are um, asking that you go on our website and schedule an appointment for that just so we can follow safe um, COVID guidelines. 
And if there are no more questions, again, thank you for coming and we hope to see you next week for our Topic Tuesday. Thank you.